Do you have anxiety over driving a big RV? This week, we're going to talk about why that's not as big of a problem as it might seem. Plus, we're going to talk about how we make coffee on the road. That and more on RV Miles. This summer, L.L. Bean wants to help you feel great out there with gear, tips, and advice for heading outdoors and exploring all the possibilities of the season. One easy addition you can make to your camping and hiking wardrobe to help keep you cool is a bandana. This headwear hero will keep sweat out of your eyes, bugs out of your hair, and sun off your neck. And you can even dip it into water and then put it under your hat or around your neck to keep you cool. A hot weather must have. For more fun ideas, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Welcome to episode number 283 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and even coffee. <laughs> we are coming to you from the North Pole. Yes, I promise it's the real one where Santa Claus is. Yeah, you can see him actually Monday through Thursday from like 9 to 4. <laughs> you can see him from the highway. Excuse me. It is the world's The largest. world's largest Santa. He's held down with guy wires and has a fence around him. He's lived through a lot of winters here. But his reindeer too. are there. Yes. So. And they're adorable. Yes. We why, actually, did, why do I feel like you're throwing shade at this Santa Claus house that we went to, which filled my it was, heart? It was very enjoyable. It was really cool to see reindeer. Plus, we got the best souvenir I think we've got in our entire travels ever. I mean, we got some real legit solid brass reindeer bells, like on a leather strap. They sound like magic, (laughs) Christmas, and believing, and just pure joy. I cannot wait to put them up. Oh, it's Christmas in July. We're going to take a break this week from talking about our travels and the different places that we've been and talk about fears over driving an RV. I think it's something that comes around often for people who are driving one for the first time. Abby recently had her real first driving the RV experience and she's actually been doing it a lot lately. So she's got some insight on that and I've got some as well. It's a discussion from two very different perspectives from the perspective of a very anxious person who has taken almost seven years to get behind the wheel. Wave hello to the golf cart. Bye KOA. And from the perspective of someone who jumped behind the wheel of a school bus and didn't give it a second thought and drove it really having no experience whatsoever from Ohio back to Chicago. It's just going to be us talking. It's going to be a lot of us on this episode because you also were like, let's talk about coffee. Okay, so You're the we're, one who we're, wanted we'll to talk. We'll talk about driving in the sec- second section of the show. But this post in the RV Miles Facebook group actually from your mom mm. spawned this idea for me. She posted a, a tea kettle that is collapsible. It's sort of made out of that silicon on top and then mm-hmm. the bottom surface. I can't remember if it was electric or if it was actually heatable. But I think it was heatable. Regardless, it, it collapsed. And that got me thinking that we have tried so many different ways to make coffee on Mm -hmm. the road. Also, just heating up water to be able to use in washing dishes, washing dishes, (laughs) in ramen noodles, and tea, what have you. So, I thought we could talk a little bit about how we have tried to make coffee many different ways and how we sort of make coffee now. Sure. Well, we're real basic coffee people. I think There's nothing fancy about I, my coffee. I think, we're, I think you're a level up from basic. I think basic is Folgers, Folgers <laughs> from the can, right? Okay. I'm not Folgers from yeah. the can. 
I, but you know what? My grandma was. Yeah. And when I see Folgers, no, but when I see Folgers, I think of my grandma Betty. I think of my grandma Betty's house. I find a lot of joy in seeing a can of Folgers. I'm not going to buy a can of Folgers. What we have right now is, so we just finished some house roast from a coffee shop in Fort Langley that we had purchased that we had actually walked over there almost every morning to get coffee. We really liked their coffee. So I bought some for here. We just finished that. And then I just bought just at Fred Meyer, the local, I guess, version of a Walmart in this area is the best way to describe a Fred Meyer. I just bought some coffee from North Pole Coffee Company and I got their St. Snickerdoodle. <laughs> well, that's one thing that so. we've been enjoying doing is getting local coffee from local yes. roasters. And not yeah. as grown in these areas, but it's roasted in these areas. Yeah. And I think it's no secret because I pretty much fresh tank it every single year. The Roastery's Holiday Blend is probably, in my opinion, absolutely the best coffee out there. I think the roastery in general, anytime I find roastery on three in Kansas city, and that's a Kansas city, that's a Kansas city company. What I just got from North pole falls in line with the holiday blend. It's got a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of hazelnut, and it's got like some flavor to it. It's got some comfort. I am someone in the morning who the first thing I think about as soon as I open my eyes is the coffee. I just want to reiterate, you are watching a the second week of July episode. It is not, it's not, Christmas we've already lie. talked about Christmas I, well, a lot. Listen, but, our kids have been going around singing that H.H. Greg jingle. <laughs> like, I don't even know how it goes, but I know that the jingle is all about Christmas in July. I don't know. Save all you want at Christmas in July at I, H.H. Greg. Or I don't think I've ever heard do, Totally doing it wrong. You've not heard I them don't doing think so. this? Uh-uh. You will know. I'll. You will know it when you hear it. Anyway, you. The reason I say you're not basic when it comes to coffee is you do grind the beans. I do now. Yeah. Although, <laughs> I would like to stop doing that. But I do grind the beans just because we're using a French press. And one of the things about when you use a French press is often when you buy ground beans, it's a really fine grind. And a fine grind is great for drip coffee. It was great for when we were in the Sabre because we had a drip coffee maker, but it's not the best for a French press. Yeah. The grinds get through the screen. Yeah. You need a a much coarser grind. Mm -hmm. So I've been grinding beans and also we have this amazing, I mean, really, I actually saw it at one of the coffee shops in Langley. It's called Airscape and it's made by Planetary Designs. I'll link to it. I've probably talked about it before. I'll put it in the RV Miles Amazon shop, but it is essentially an airtight canister. And yeah, it's what it's what the different border agents have been looking in for drugs. Yes, at, yes. At, the, yes. It's what yes. <laughs> it's our coffee slash drug storage. And what it is what's great about it is so you can grind up the coffee, you put it in there, and then it has this airtight seal inner lid that you press all the way down until you reach the coffee grinds. You press them down, you compress, you close it. And then it has another on top of that airtight actual lid that goes with it as well. So it's almost like a vacuum seal. There's no air left in the container. And it is specifically so you can have a full canister of ground coffee and be able to keep it nice and fresh. And I noticed that one of the coffee shops, like I just mentioned in Fort Langley, they had a whole row of these. I took a picture of it and sent it off to Planetary Design because they had a whole row of them on top where they make all their coffees. They were keeping all of their coffees in these Airscape canisters. So I would like, what I try to often do is just grind up our coffee all on one big swoop and then put it into this airscape canister which i really love but it is a little i think in our current living situation because we can't keep like a coffee grinder out on the counter it gets a little tedious yeah you forget sometimes and people are in bed and all that and 7 a.m and i'm like wrapping a (laughs) towel around the grinder because there's three sleeping children within five feet of me and it's like well so and the main reason we use a french press is that we are 
trying to not use electricity because we're boondocking sure. a lot. And also, there's nowhere to put one. And we have no place to there's put a coffee nowhere. maker. So we're able to heat the water up in a tea kettle on the stove mm-hmm. with propane. Yeah, and we use... So we had a legit tea kettle. And then Jason decided to take it with us one day evening we were going to be making meals out at a park or something and he wanted to take that one instead of taking our more durable smaller camping one well we were making a bunch of those like pre-made hiking meals that you just pour hot water in so it was going to just put that on the camp stove with a lot of water in it and be able to make them all at once yeah and it was working out great until you decided to set the kettle on like a stump that wasn't a flat surface yeah and knocked it it over and broke the handle off so now we're back to using this gsi outdoors tiny little i maybe it's 24 ounces it's a little maybe no it's like 32 ounces i think it's just a tiny tiny. camping tea kettle and the only real drawback with it is that it doesn't have a whistle i don't don't actually see it's done i have i I just have an ear for these. I don't. I, it doesn't bother um, me. Either. It doesn't I don't bother think me it's that there's necessary. no whistle. Now, if it was your mother, but there would need, actually can we get her one of these? There would be no because... water left because she'll, <laughs> she'll sit and let it. that thing whistle for ten minutes. She'll, she's busy. She's trying to wake up in the morning. Like, come on now, it's hard to get over to the kettle sometimes. At least when you live in a house and not in a twenty-five foot. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing, this to get back to our beloved little tea kettle, which I at this point. We're never getting rid of. We yeah. have had this tiny little thing, and you can get it on Amazon. All so y'all can see it. I'll put it in the, the RV Miles store. We have had that since 2014. Yeah, so it's way before we started RVing. And yeah. It has it has lived through so much. Yeah. It was tent camping. We bought it to go camping in smoky mountains there are a lot of like camping gadget things that we're just we don't recommend because they're cheap and they break or they're just not necessary when you have an rv you have a little bit more room for stuff but this one is just something that has always work it is no frills there's nothing to go bad on it we're it, gonna we, pass it down yeah. to our grandchildren <laughs> yeah. like if i leave them nothing <laughs> i will leave the gsi outdoors camping kettle and they will look at it and be like oh yeah. that reminds me of grandma just like when i look at folders so in the past we've done the k-cups we've when done we were in our apartment we've done the traditional drip coffee maker i think we had k-cups for a while in the bus as well Not or really, we didn't we weren't really coffee drinkers yeah in the bus it felt like really daunting for some reason so the history of our coffee has been k-cups uh-huh. when we were in the apartment i'm pretty sure we had that we brought our K cup coffee oh, maker with us in the bus because uh, we because kept getting those from we got kept getting from Costco the compostable K cups. Oh, you're right. Yes. Okay, so yeah. we've done K cups. We have when we were tent camping, we used to be, do Starbucks Sevilla, the mm-hmm. instant boy trash, awful. Go get some Hikers Brew. Instant instead. coffee is is, is generally worst. not great, but Starbucks is not. Yeah, and look, I got words yeah. for Starbucks in my black tank later. <laughs> so then we went on to we went back to a French press, and that was like a glass one. Mm. Fine, whatever. Didn't really like it because it wasn't keeping the coffee nice and hot. From- yeah, then that, and also I think we didn't understand the grind issue with the larger grind and stuff. You know, I think back then we were kind of. I think we understood it. Well, I just don't think we, we weren't did grinding it. coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> like we weren't grinding yeah. the coffee. Yeah. yeah, we had a drip for a while, mm. and really, the saber is when coffee life really bloomed. Like when we mm. finally had a true dedicated coffee bar in the saber. Something, boy, do I miss the kitchen in that thirty-seven FLL. When we finally had that. That's when, like, coffee life really exploded. And we had a big drip coffee maker yeah. for a while. We had a big drip coffee maker. I would prep it the night before. And then we, we went down to just, like, a little five-cupper. And that was also perfect because we're really just yeah. kind of, like, one cup people. One cup in the morning two each cups, of us. Yeah, yeah. That's, two cups sends me off into the yeah. stratosphere. Same. Like, it's yeah. too much. I need to have, like, a big meal if I'm having two cups of coffee. Yeah, that's when you're like, I need the Grand Slam breakfast. Yeah, I'll do I'll, yeah. I'll do two cups of coffee at <laughs> Cracker Barrel. Or, but listen, yeah. two cups of coffee at Cracker Barrel is just watered-down sure. coffee. Like, sure. it's not even, like, real coffee. And now we're using, and I think we're in a period where we're using what 
I consider to be some of the best coffee that we have ever made at home. And that is through our brew tracks that we have both the Overlander and the base yeah, camp. Yeah, we have two sizes. It, yeah. Basically, it's a camping specific French press. Yeah. It's insulated, oh. it's stainless steel. It's basically like a big stainless steel mug, but it is a French press. Yeah. And listen, we've talked about it a lot. I fresh tanked it. I love it. But for me, it is, it just, it keeps coffee so hot. But also, and you might be thinking, Jason, Abby, why do you have two of those? That's crazy. It why is, do you need but- two? But it's not because you know what happens? You know what happens? <laughs> and it happens to all of us. So don't come at me. You do it too. You forget to clean it. Well, that's true. Okay. And so the next morning, yeah. because sometimes, you know, I make it and I put it off to the side because I don't want yeah. it sitting in the sink. So I'll just like put it off to the side. I'll wake up. I'll do the dishes. I'll wake up the next morning yeah. and I'll be like, bugger. And so what's nice is you got that backup up in the cabinet. It's and you're true. like, oh, yeah, I got the backup. And then it's, you know, yeah. early in the morning. And the only thing you have to do is put all of the night's dishes away first before you can make coffee, which is also very loud <laughs> at 7 a.m. We have also been putting our coffee in coffee mugs from REI. Mm-hmm. They're just sort of standard coffee mug size and shape. They're mm-hmm. metal. And they have a rubber lid that presses into them. Yeah, we only brought four coffee mugs. And boy, this was not the trip to not have space for coffee mugs because I would have such a stellar collection at this point. But we don't have space. So we only brought four. We brought a Yeti, an L.L. Bean, and then these two REIs. And all of them are insulated. All of them are for camping. All of them are awesome. I have a lid. I use lids on mine because I am all about keeping the heat in. You do not use lids, and you are all about waiting until it's basically lukewarm bath water. No, I like it to be hot. I just don't want to burn my mouth. Don't lie. Don't lie to the people, Jason. I don't. My mouth gets it gets burnt easily. I don't know how you drink it. No, I don't. Such thing as hot coffee. 30 minutes later, that has been sitting at the counter with no lid on it. That is not hot coffee you are lying to the people i mean i like mine at like the temperature you would eat Luke, soup at lukewarm like. bath water <laughs> all mm-hmm. right so that's how we make coffee <laughs> wow so <laughs> gripping you're welcome we know that inquiring minds have wanted to know what is the coffee situation around bexy but this was the episode we needed just a light fluffy episode we yeah. haven't done something like this in we're a while. gonna take a break and when we come back in just a moment we're gonna talk about anxiety over driving an rv for the first time or not the first time we'll be right back be right back more in a moment but first this video is sponsored by rvmattress.com by brooklyn bedding did you know that the mattresses that come with your rv are usually just a placeholder most rv manufacturers never intended that you actually sleep on it we've been using mattresses from brooklyn bedding in our last two rvs and we couldn't be happier you can choose your thickness and all sorts of different odd rv mattress sizes that customization was essential for clearing the bedroom slide in our fifth wheel and for the kids bunks in the new travel trailer we're sleeping great on real mattresses from a real mattress company in our rv rvmattress.com offers a 120 night sleep trial along with a 10-year warranty plus their products are entirely toxin free and simple to ship and set up we even had them shipped to campgrounds and you just unroll them and let them expand the rv miles community gets 25 percent off when you visit rvmattress.com slash rv miles and use the promo code rv miles that's rvmattress.com slash rv miles with promo code rv miles for 25 percent off our thanks to rvmattress.com for supporting this channel and to you for supporting our sponsors. We are back and we're here to talk about driving your RV and some fears and anxiety that you might have over doing so. Or maybe fears and anxiety you don't have, but you can't quite understand why others Mm -hmm. do. So we're going to have a conversation that involves two very different perspectives when it comes to driving an RV. I, for a lot of years in the beginning of the RV Miles creation and discussions for the first like maybe year or so, I was really quiet about my struggles with anxiety. My struggles with anxiety have been something that I think was really detrimental almost to my career as an actor. It's probably one of the reasons if I ever really wanted to unpack it, why I had to kind of walk away from theater a little bit. And it is something that as I've gotten older and as I've had children and I've had all these different experiences that I've had to learn 
to manage. And sometimes with anxiety, there are things you can manage right away. And then there are some things that take a real long time for you to find that sweet spot where you feel comfortable. And driving the RV was that spot for me. It took almost seven years yeah. and four rigs. This is our yeah. fourth. You did a couple little short stints like down the road oh yeah with the saber yeah but, with like traily and yeah. the sabre i would drive them small distances places like where i felt out of the campground maybe yeah, yeah maybe maybe yeah. <laughs> i never ever got behind the wheel of the bus though no and i kind of don't regret that like i don't have any regret yeah. about that i don't have any regret about not driving the trailer i the pioneer i don't have any regret about not driving i will the say Saber. The, the bus is the most fun thing i've ever driven it, you always looked like you were having such a good time up there as you were freezing or sweating yeah. that well that part was not fun <laughs> that no air conditioning and it was so loud i couldn't hear an ambulance come up on me if i wanted to yeah, there's, there's nothing <laughs> tunnel vision. But what prompted this was we had a conversation the first time I got behind the I or in front of the Ibex I should say and drove it here through Canada. We had a conversation about what was it? What triggered me being able to do this and what were some of the things that were helping me feel comfortable? And we had talked about that. And we're going to share those in a minute, but before we get to those one of the questions I had posed to you that really had you stopping and thinking for a while was, why was it so easy for you? Yeah. Why weren't you nervous when you got behind the wheel? Well, when we got the bus, I had already driven big things before, you know, I, and I think... Like what? If Well, what? if we go back to like when I was a teenager learning how to drive, I was in, in Iowa, you could get your learner permit at 14 years old which meant you could drive with a parent. And I got mine at 14. Oh, I'm, I'm sure and you did. my mom had a job where she was going to present stuff at shows around the Midwest that involved hauling a little, I think maybe like an 18-foot sort of Hallmark enclosed trailer behind our minivan. So I'm like 14, 15 years old, and I was driving that thing while she was like, fallen asleep because we were driving overnight <laughs> to get to places right so she would like be have just finished working because we weren't staying in hotels and stuff so we did a lot of driving that and i think that plus then my second ve i started driving in a minivan and my second vehicle was a pickup truck so i was driving bigger vehicles from the beginning and then when i got into doing theater professionally then I would sort of have to like rent box trucks to pick up sets and stuff like that. So I did a decent amount of that driving through downtown Chicago and that sort of thing. But, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of anxiety over that stuff back then either. And I think... Well, you're not an anxious that's person. That's just, just my mentality when it comes to driving is like, I'm kind of excited about those things. I almost feel safer in big oh, things interesting. in a way there is always the little sort of tinge of anxiety you're over you know, it's it is always different driving a big vehicle or towing something for me than it is just driving the truck you know to the store or something like that there is a difference and i think that's good i mean i think there's like a there's a saying a lot of dangerous professions have like they use the riggers in theater used to say this like if you're ever not afraid is yeah. when you should stop because you, that means you're comfortable with doing something that is extremely dangerous and you shouldn't be comfortable because you're not paying attention if you're comfortable. So I think there's a level of that you should always have some sort of like extra something that's giving you the ability to like drive through it. But that's not what we're really talking about here. I think you're absolutely right. I think the minute you become comfortable and you don't recognize the danger in what you're doing is when you there's the potential for mm -hmm. an accident. One of the things, you know, to come back to, because for years, anytime it has been mentioned, and we don't mention it often, but anytime it has been mentioned that I don't drive or that I hadn't driven, the level of crap I would get from people about it was just so frustrating because no one knows you. Okay, no one knows yeah. you, your life, your situations, whatever those may be. 
But here's the thing about all of that is that the one person that probably mattered, the no one else mattered in those comments. The one person that mattered was the one person who never gave me crap. And that was you. You have never pressured me. You have never requested it of me. Well, you have never tried to force me to do it. And maybe that's a, th- maybe, a, and I, not that I should have pressured you or forced you, but there also is this thing where I just really like driving. You really like driving. I really liked being a passenger. Yeah. And w- yes, you're, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, but remember my not. I do remember my not. Yeah. And I also remember the community that came to help us. I remember the people that were so kind in picking up in places where we had fallen or did not have the skills. I don't feel shame for the fact that I didn't feel comfortable taking the Pioneer three or four miles over to the KOA or whatever it was. And honestly, maybe in my state of grief and fear and anxiety and the millions of other things that were going on, I probably wasn't the one to be driving that anyway. Sure. But had we, you know, done the things that you would have done, say you were a solo RVer, that, sure. you know, you would have started off by trying to drive around a parking lot and then done some short drives. And so on, like you have with the Ibex in recent days, you would have been able to do it just fine. But if I was a solo RVer, my counterpoint to that would be is that I would be purchasing something that I was comfortable driving. Yeah. I was not comfortable driving a school bus. I did not feel comfortable pulling a 38 foot travel trailer behind us. And I definitely wasn't comfortable with a 43 foot fifth wheel. It finally took getting a 25 foot travel trailer to be my sweet spot. And that has been a joy. I have loved driving back. Yeah. But that was your sweet spot to jump into it. Yes. Like I'm, I guess. What oh I'm, no, I have legit. I will. I have no desire whatsoever to drive the Sabre. Yeah. I, yeah. None. I do not want that thing back there at all. And I get that. I do think, though, if you did it, you would get comfortable enough with it sure. to do it. Absolutely. You know, there's no reason you couldn't. Obviously, you can do it. No, you have the I ability could. to do it. And yes, I, there's a, I can there is do a level of, I put my mind uh, to. of fear because of its size. And I totally yeah. get that. Because there are, listen, like, there are things to be to be concerned about there's wind hitting the side of your big rv there's low clearances there's changing lanes and worrying about has is somebody that back there there's your tail swing and hitting signs and stuff when you turn there's a lot to think about and to be concerned about so all of those fears are legitimate i think personally just personally speaking i don't have a desire to be well versed knowledgeable in every aspect of everything. I am very comfortable being well-versed in things that fill my soul with joy, things that pertain to me and my interests and where I am in life. And I know for a fact that presented, like if I had no other choice when we were in mine up, but to drive that pioneer, 100% that thing was going to get to the KOA and we were going to be well, fine. If I had no choice but to drive that saber because you couldn't or I was alone or whatever yeah. I could drive it there's a difference between can and yeah, want and want to and, and, <laughs> and, I, and I don't I get, want to I get that I guess <laughs> I, I get don't want to and <laughs> want I get to. that I guess I guess the point that I'm trying to get at here is there is space between what we look at and think we would yes would or would not be comfortable with and what once we actually do it and try it we would or would not be comfortable with because I think a lot of people would be more afraid of driving a fifth wheel than they would a large travel trailer and actually Mm -hmm. driving the Sabre is way better than driving the Pioneer was. I think for people who live with anxiety, the space between those two is probably, depending on the situation, can be an incredibly long bit of space to get to that yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, for me, it took seven years oh, sure. to get to the point that for this particular yeah. thing, there are a lot of things like, hey, you have like 36 hours and then we have to take, you have to have a baby. Like, oh, okay. I thought I had, you know, I mean, yes, I, are you serious? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm not going to tell you. No, I got 36 hours to reconcile myself with this. Here, I needed almost yeah. seven years it's completely understandable i guess i think it's important though for people to 
understand. I think there's a, I think we make decisions, big purchase decisions like buying an RV. And I'm not saying we, I'm saying we as a society. I was going to say, um, for the moment without thinking it through. Well, yes. Well, yeah, but sometimes based on like what our perceptions of looking at that thing and being like, oh, I don't want that. It, it's going to be harder to drive than that. If you're just going off the looks and if you're not going off trying it or the advice of many other people, you might be making a mistake. And I feel like we've made lots of purchase errors in our lives based on not necessarily anxiety based, but like we thought this thing would be easier. Right. And it was not it was right. Not. It, it was not the smart move to make. The so, shiny packaging fooled uh, you us. You know, like I said, with the bus, it's the, it was the most enjoyable driving experience. I wasn't expecting that, you know, going oh. into it. I was very nervous about yeah. driving it the first time. But once I got behind the wheel of of it and realized how well I could see down in front of me oh, that, and the just... people around me and the vehicles and it turned better than any other RV we've had. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. There are other things about it that gave <laughs> us more anxiety having to do with like the engine and repairs and would we yeah. make it there? Yeah, I, I feel like if nothing else comes from this conversation because we've just been free talking, I hope that anyone listening to despite where you are on your comfort level of driving is that you always provide grace for those who are not in the same boat as you like understand that people who are nervous about driving who feel anxious about doing it please give them the space and the support that they need in order to be comfortable with that and that can take on a lot of different things maybe that is classes yeah, Maybe yeah. that is just being left alone. Maybe that is going to an empty parking lot and saying, hey, you want to drive this around a little bit? Or for me, there were a couple of things that is as kind of maybe crazy as this is going to sound. It was being on two lane highway in Alaska that finally was the thing that I thought. Yeah, other I fewer can, vehicles around. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. There's no, you know entrance and exit ramps that I have to worry about. I'm on a two lane highway where, you know, they're keeping the speed. Let's be honest, none of us can really get these things above 45 for the most part with a lot of the roads. Traffic is really light. There's plenty of pull-offs. And then I had the benefit too of having friends in front of us and asking them, hey, the first time I drove, I said to Jamie, I said, will you lead? Can I just, can I follow you? Will you lead today? And she so graciously did. And what that allowed me to do was to set my pace based off of her. So I didn't have to feel the stress of having someone else behind me and being like, oh, I hope I'm going fast enough. Or I, she set the pace. I was able to watch her rig, have a rig in front of me, watch how it was navigating the roads. And that was also great for me because then I could say, okay, I, you know, I'm watching how it's taking its turns and I'm kind of mimicking that. And it was such a stressless environment because there was no, we got to get to this campground by this time. We've, there was no real schedule. Yeah. It was, hey, we've got some ideas of where we want to stop and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And yeah. And if for anybody, they, they're... It could be, yeah, just steps like either classes mm -hmm. or or doing the going to a parking lot somewhere and taking your time as many times as you need to go do that. Or like you had been doing a little bit of why don't you just start by driving us to the dump station, you know, yeah. and, Which and going from there. Trying to get out of a campground. But sometimes might, that's the worst part. Might be some of the, the worst part of RV driving. Sometimes that's the worst part. But also for my, my anxiety friends out there, celebrate those who don't have the anxiety about driving. And if they are comfortable driving and you all are comfortable with that situation, that's okay. It's really okay. There is no rule out there that says if you own an RV with and you are, unless obviously unless you're a solo RVer, then yeah, you're going to need to know how to drive it. But if you and your partner have purchased an RV together and one of you is comfortable driving and one of you is not, yeah. Celebrate the person who is comfortable driving and you take your time until it's right for you. And then it's great. We all have different jobs. When we, when, when there's a couple, Some, 
in an RV, we all have different things that we prefer doing and Listen, are better at. Somebody has to be in charge of the music. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be classic country. <laughs> Stop it. And I, here, listen, here, the, I can't. But the other thing I want to say, too, is like there, there is a big difference in knowing how to drive and in, in an emergency situation. And by an emergency situation, I don't mean what if like I got sick somewhere and we have to stay there for a while. I mean, what if like I'm having a heart attack and you got to drive us to the hospital because we're nowhere near anywhere where an mm-hmm. ambulance is going to come. Like there, where it's, it's it, the emergency is happening right then. If you are a licensed driver, you probably have the skills to get that vehicle where it needs to go. Absolutely. It just does not need to be something that you need to like practice on a regular basis and be forced to do if it gives you if it gives you like severe issues with anxiety. Maybe try it once or twice and realize how it goes and be like, okay, I could do this if I really had to. And yeah. if you want to be done with it there, be done with it there. It's fine. Yeah. I could not agree more with you. I just really think that everyone deserves their space to do this. I think this is a really good place to kind of end this conversation for this episode. If you take anything from it, just take that as little or as long time as you need to feel comfortable. Driving an RV is okay. There is no timeline. It, you are not going to get your RVers. Unless you just bought one and you have to drive it off the lot. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you went and bought an RV and you're anxious and you don't know how you're going to get it off the lot, take a friend, <laughs> find yourself a Jason yeah. Epperson, take them with you, and then... Get into the environment where you can learn or find a friend who owns one that might be willing to let you drive around in a parking lot or, you know, back roads or something so you can get comfortable. I don't know that I could ever say an anxious person who feels anxiety about driving an RV should go buy an RV and then for the very first time Probably drive not. it off the lot. Probably not. <laughs> that would not be my advice. So let's leave it at that. Let's take a break. If you have thoughts, though, about this or your own experience with driving an RV that you would like to share with us, if you have other encouraging words you can share for those who are anxious about driving or just feeling like they're not good enough because they're not doing it, we'd love to hear those encouraging words. You can share them over on the RV Miles Facebook group. We always post in the RV Miles Facebook group the show notes for this episode. And then we encourage everyone there to have that discussion about that episode inside that post. So please come over and share your thoughts with us on this or on coffee. We would, we'd really love to talk to you. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. Have you heard of Park Wolf? It's a game-changing iPhone app for exploring U.S. national parks. Park Wolf's Wildlife Finder makes finding any wildlife species super easy. Park Wolf gives you heat maps and charts of the best places and times in the park to find any species. Park Wolf's free drive GPS Explorer makes exploring the park a breeze by showing upcoming places in the park as you drive, along with distances to the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover points. You can download Park Wolf for iPhone from the App Store today and start making the most of your national park visit. Welcome back, and it is time to check the level of our tanks, sponsored by Matt's RV Reviews Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the no BS toilet treatment, which you can find in the RV Miles Amazon store at amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles, along with all of our other fresh tank recommendations, as long as they are sold on Amazon. All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? So we were at Costco yesterday. 
You're black tanking a Costco, and I'm going to fresh tank a Costco. Well, this it, is weird. it's not Costco itself. It was a person at Costco. Oh, so, Peter you know, Short Costco, th there's this thing going around now you may have heard of. Netflix started it where they're cracking down on password sharing. Well, it, Costco is cracking down on membership sharing. Mm -hmm. So you have, you've always had to give them your card when you check out, but now they've got the self checkouts too. So now at the self checkout sign, they have a big sign there that says you need to show your membership card and the, they have a person there stationed. So you have to show your, the picture on the back of your membership card mm -hmm. with the person standing there so that they know that you're not sharing your membership. And this guy yesterday made a huge scene because he refused to show his membership card to somebody. And they had to call a manager over who then had to call over the store manager. And basically that store manager ended up just standing like right next to him, waited for him to, cause you have to scan it to actually use the machine and waited for him to scan it. So he could like take a peek at the picture on the back of it to make sure this guy was who he said he was. And he's just making a stink for no reason. Now, and you know, I hate when people make everybody else uncomfortable by doing mm -hmm. something like that. Hold up the line. No, the it, very long line. There are times that I think that silent resistance is uh, legitimate. Costco, which is a membership organization that you pay a membership for, <laughs> and I don't want other people using a, you know, I don't want to have other people making my more membership more expensive by taking advantage of it, mm -hmm. right? If you're at Walmart and they're wanting you to check the receipts and there's a line of 15 people waiting to check the receipts, I'm walking past that line. I'm walking right past it. Bye. And, you know, at whatever. <laughs> like, well, I did not pay Walmart a membership to be there. Yeah. I already purchased my goods and I'm out. This is before the point of sale, making sure that you're a member before you buy stuff. I get that. Fine with it. Yeah, he was a really interesting individual and I think it takes a lot of I definitely don't think it takes a lot of courage to be okay with making everybody else in line he had the card in his hand uh, you know uh, <laughs> so I yeah he yeah. was something all right what is in your fresh tank this week my fresh tank is that the 2024 Rand McNally motor carriers atlas is out the motor carriers atlas is the best paper map you can have as an RV or if you have an RV of a def decent size if you have uh, some tiny little thing and you don't worry about uh, heights of bridges and stuff like that you don't Maybe need to worry about it but don't tell our pod people that they don't matter <laughs> they can have it too or, you know, a little class B camper van whatever Go get it. but the motor carriers atlas essentially shows you the routes that are friendly to semi trucks which means they're friendly to any RV on the road because semi trucks are bigger than any RV. So it is really convenient. They're highlighted in sort of like a bright orange and you can see which routes are safe for you to drive on. Doesn't mean there are always routes that you might want to drive on. For <laughs> instance, like the million dollar highway is a truck safe route going from Ure, Colorado down to Durango. And it's not one that a lot of people enjoy taking. But there's also, it's a long way around that too. So, but it's a great option, especially if you don't have cell service, your GPS goes down, whatever, to have a paper map backup. We've used it many times to double check that the route we're taking is indeed safe for us to be traveling on. So we'll throw that in our Amazon store as well, but you can pick that up. The 2024 version is obviously updated with the most recent information. So if you have an old one, it is now over a year old and you probably want to replace it because mm -hmm. stuff changes all the time. Awesome. All right. What's in your black tank this week? All right. This has been 11, 12, 13 year long relationship. We've had a lot of good times. You've gotten me through some bad times. You've brought me the pumpkin cream cold brew. Uh, you're not talking about me. I'm like, 13 no. years, like we have no. a 15 year old. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Listen, I mean, do the math. I'm He's breaking still... up with someone that's not me. I am breaking up with Starbucks. Oh my I am breaking goodness. up with Starbucks. Yeah. I'm about I'm to done. deposit a bunch of money in, into <laughs> about, our investments. We're about to be real rich. I'm done with Starbucks. Doesn't mean I'm not going to still go there every once in a while. I will not be seeking Starbucks out. I will. I'm really frustrated 
with the quality at Starbucks anymore. I'm incredibly frustrated with the cost. But what really did it for me, look, I can put up with all of your sugary drinks, 900 grams of sugar and 2,000 calories. What really tipped the scale for me, though, was they have drastically decreased the benefits within their app. It's more stars now to redeem for rewards. It's less stars for money. There's no benefit anymore to Starbucks because I can go to a local coffee shop and get a drip coffee, which is really all I want, a drip coffee with some oat milk. And I'm going to pay probably a dollar less. Yeah, I think the I, only real positive is you know you know Starbucks will always have that oat milk. Yes. Uh, whereas but a lot of the other places won't. But. Yeah, but it, but times are a-changing, Jay. Yeah, yeah like, it's all throughout Canada that they did. Times are a-changing. <laughs> also, Starbucks has yet, and this really does blow my mind, Starbucks has yet to implement any kind of gluten-free or really dairy-free options outside of egg bites. There's nothing there. And I know that that's not impossible to do because I've seen the tiny mom and pop coffee shops be able to do it. I know that a billion dollar corporation like Starbucks can make those kinds of changes, but they haven't. Starbucks, you are just, you're not, you're not special enough for what you want from us anymore. You're just not special enough. I have to break up with you. It's been, I want to say it's not you, it's me, but it's actually, it is you. You're the problem. I knew I was in trouble the day I was like, I would rather go home and make myself some coffee than go to Starbucks. Yeah. That price is just, I knew it's out of this world. Things I, you know, I knew I had to end it then. My grandparents used to live on my mom's side. They used to live behind a McDonald's and it was more cost effective for them to walk over to McDonald's every morning and get coffee than it really was to just make it themselves. Mm -hmm. Coffee used to be that cheap. I sometimes (laughs) I have been known well not anymore but in the past I have been known to have a cup of McDonald's coffee in the morning. I have a very distinct memory of being in New Mexico. Yeah. And the only coffee, the only thing outside of me going yeah. home and making it was McDonald's. And I was like, I ain't got the patience. Yeah. I mean, it tastes like you opened up the radiator on your truck and just mm-hmm. poured it in there and drank that. But Sometimes you need that kind of <laughs> jolt. You just need it. <laughs> All right. What's in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank goes to Costco, but not to the annoying man in the pink shirt at Costco, yeah. but to a product at Costco that is also awful for you but so decadent. And I am talking about the dark chocolate caramel sea salt squares. You shouldn't be able to that, buy dark chocolate caramels in that quantity, and if there but is, you can at Costco. Anyone listening whose last name ends in Epperson, <laughs> they know exactly what I'm talking about because I cannot go into your dad and Tam's house if they have them there. Yeah. I, they, I cannot. And once now you, you've brought them into our home. They Once you pop, you can't stop. They're no. Pringles. And so I. But they're not. They're, they're not. They're like 400 <laughs> times the calories of Pringles. No, they are luxury. They're like a Lindor, but better. <laughs> but not Lindor. And yeah. so I bought these at Costco yesterday because I thought, We are about to, you know, look, we've done a ton of driving. And in order to get back to Illinois, we will have to cover 3,500 miles quickly. And I was like, we deserve these little chocolate caramels, these salty squares. I like like how you think we'll still have those on the drive back. Well, (laughs) listen, I did go and strategically put them over by my side of the bed. I'm not even keeping them with the food. I always, if if I'm over on the side of her bed looking for something that I'm missing, like the TV remote You're not allowed over there. No, like it's usually the TV remote. And all of a sudden, I always find candy. Stop. Going There's always over chocolate there. over there. You are that is my side. That is my space. Don't invade my space. You've got your side with 
thousands and thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. None of it's chocolate. I have my side with some dark chocolate oh, caramel. We can trade. Fine. <laughs> That's fine. You I, can have the camera equipment think, on your side. I think I chocolate. still have an eBay account. So well, you can't Mama sell make it. Some money. It is hit or miss at the Costco having them. But they come in this cylinder container, this little plastic container. You can't miss them. They'll be over with all the fancy candies. Highly recommend them. They are so good. But be careful because, you know, it is. Once you pop, you can't stop. In fact, I was waiting to talk to the doctor on a telemed today. And I'd been waiting. And I thought, oh, it's kind of a little piece of candy. Where's mine? Doctor comes on as I'm like halfway through one. And I'm like, heart of <laughs> red eating from caramel. So there you have it. Go That's get some. it for this week's episode of the RV Miles Podcast. Yes, it is. And hey, just a reminder, homecoming is coming up. We always want to talk about it at the beginning of the show. And we always forget about it. So come join us for the inaugural homecoming event, October 4th through the 8th in Amana, Iowa. We only have a few tickets left. So if you want to come to this event, please get your tickets as soon as possible. The camping price cannot be beat. It's only $35 a night for full hookups, $200 for your event ticket, and we will feed you Midwest food. You are going to love it. And I promise I am also paying attention to those with dietary restrictions. If you have any questions at all, just head over to rvmiles.com slash 283, and we will have a link in there for you to sign up. Otherwise, enjoy Christmas in July, because that's how we started off this episode. And stay safe. Can you still shop at an HH, Greg? I don't think you can, but apparently they're really good for their Christmas in July. If the kids know their jingle, they still exist. But Jack told me that they went out of business. See if you can find that. And Every see, time you do this, I have to like double up the music at the end of I the know, episode. It's fine. because it's No, <laughs> this time, don't double up our music. Play the HH Greg jingle here. That's a yeah. uh, there's a copyright infringement. I cannot. You do get that. do that for you can play up to thirty seconds before it's to, an issue. That is not true. That is not Five true seconds. at all. Ten there's seconds. no there's seconds. A, no, there's a second. No, there isn't. Can, I am an expert in copyright law. Oh, expert. Okay, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Don't play it for the people. Y'all go look it up for yourself, and stay safe while you're doing it, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Save on everything at Christmas in July. H H H H H H H H Greg. Panasonic Blu-ray, ninety-nine dollars. H H H H H H H H Greg. Thirty-two inch LCD TV, two ninety-nine. LG forty-two inch HD TV, four eighty-nine. Everything's on sale during Christmas in July. H H H H.